Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game creation tool. Today, I have decided that we could do with a change of pace. We've been spending so much time in the event editor and the map editor. It's time to go into a completely different editor. That editor being Anime Maker. It is RPG Maker's built-in sprite editor. With this, we can create our own custom sprites, monsters, and title screens. I say title screens plural, but really you're only able to use one title screen in your game. Still though, if you wanted to make for more than one for whatever reason, you can go ahead and do that. Let's start with a character. So the way this works is basically, on the left here is the sprite sheet. You got nine different frames of animation that you can have here. And you basically go over to the right and doodle. And so whatever you create appears on the left and that sort of thing. It's fairly simple. We can also create straight lines if we wanted to. Very handy. Cancel out of that. Let's see, this one is, let's, let's pick a different color here. Let's go ahead and create a box, or we could just create a filled box. We also have the option of creating a circle if we want to, and yet they don't offer the option to create a filled circle. No, oh, well, that's what the manual fill option is for. So there we go. That looks good. The sprite totally worthwhile of being in a magnum opus sort of thing. We also have the option of zooming in and out. And by the way, yes, I am using a controller in order to draw here. It's kind of difficult, but the good news is RPG Maker does have mouse support. There is a mouse that was created for the PlayStation and RPG Maker uses it. Unfortunately, I don't have a mouse. Let's see here, we can also do a little bit of mirroring, so I could just go ahead and let's say I want it like this instead, I can do that. Or alternatively, I could flip it like so. And this is the copy paste option, and this is the undo button. You can only undo once, that's kind of unfortunate. Another thing that's unfortunate is that when it comes to creating these sprites, for some reason, the bottommost and rightmost line... Even if you have anything here, for whatever reason, these... Th this section is cut off whenever you use this in your game. So, don't go too close to the edge for whatever reason, and it's like that for every single frame. So it's like that on this frame, and it's like that for every other frame here. Now, since I'm not really good at making my own sprite, and no, I don't know that I want to save this. Do I want to save this? You know what, sure. I'll just save it real quick. We'll throw it somewhere in my game, maybe as a little Easter egg. In fact, we'll just call it Egg. Takes one block of memory, and there we go. So I got a little thing here that's kind of crappy, but whatever. Let's go ahead and look at some sprites that aren't so crappy, because thankfully, RPG Maker allows you to modify any of the in-game sprites. For example, if we go to sprite number 23, Color number two. Which one is this? Oh, this is a baby one. It's kind of um drab outfit he's got there. But this way you can actually see what the sprite sheet is actually comprised of. Three frames of animation for walking down, three for walking to the left, and three for walking up. In regards to the whole walking to the left thing, basically what it does is Whenever you're walking to the right, it mirrors it. It's as simple as that. Let's see, if you wanted to, you can of course modify these. So, if, for example, we wanted it something a little bit less drab looking, what we can do here 
is, let me go ahead and get a close-up view of this. I'm going to edit this color here by pressing the square button. There we go. And now I can just move these around and change this color in real time. And then from here, yeah, we'll go with yellow. And this will be a darker yellow, probably. And this will be the even darker yellow. It is definitely hard doing this with a controller. So there we go. That's an easy sprite modification. This one I'm definitely not going to use, though. There is, uh, however, something special that I want to show off. So, oop, I went too far back. This option here. So one interesting thing that RPG Maker provides by default, I think there are 67 sprites that you can use in your game. However, if you're like exploring this menu here, you notice that it goes beyond 67. We got 78, 79, all the way to 840, and then a whole bunch of cat things. What are these, you might be wondering? Well, these are bonus sprites. They are essentially secret sprites hidden inside Anime Maker. The only way to access these is to go into Anime Maker, load these up, save them to a memory card, and then use them in your game. I think that's actually kind of neat how there's all these secret sprites. It's kind of a shame that you have to use up your precious memory in order to use these, but that is in fact an option. And in fact, I got a chart here showing all of them that are in Anime Maker. It's quite an interesting selection. A lot of them are modern characters or futuristic. Gotta love that guy with the briefcase there. Also a cop, a nurse. You know, I should totally use these. In fact, these are the reason why I wanted to go into Anime Maker today, because I'm totally going to use some of these. Now, which one should I use, though? Well, unfortunately, the only person who is here is Maddie, and I was kind of hoping to have a group here so I could be all, Hey, guys! Pick what these characters I should use are... words... trouble. But since only Maddie is here, I guess I'll just go ahead and pick one for myself. So, let's see here. I'm gonna do one of these for my monkey character and since having the monkey change into a human is kind of boring we'll definitely choose a more interesting sprite so that it's not quite as boring so what I'm going to choose for the monkey transformation into the human is the very last one that would be 840 so this will be our monkey character turned human and I'll just go ahead and yeah I'll rename it might as well monkey oops um, also I accidentally showed all something else you can do if you press the square button on certain options you get this anime girl who tells you what you can do with the option you're hovering over that's kind of handy you know what? Yeah, Monk D. I meant to hit the backspace button up there. But, you know, Monk D is good. We'll go with Monk D for our monkey. And along with that... Let me take a look at my sprites again. We're gonna choose something for the girl. I say... Let's go with the nurse. The nurse seems like a good option. So that would be yeah. There we go. So we'll call her. Uh, let's go with the name that she's got right now. <laughs> Not Gert. That would be wrong. Girl. And I'll probably throw in a few other fun sprites just for funsies. 
What's a sprite that I could use? How about that cop sprite? Which one is the cop sprite? The one after the nurse, huh? Okay, so I will go in and get the cop. And I'll go ahead and save the cop, because I figure I do kind of want a cop in this game. What's the character limit for these names, by the way? Let me find that out. Not very long, only six characters. And while that's the saving, what's another good one? You know, I do like the guy with the briefcase, so how about I go ahead and include him? He's kind of far back there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 back there. Alright. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. In hindsight, I probably should have numbered these the numbers that they are in this editor. Oh well. I, I don't feel like naming him. He's not important enough to have a name. And one more for good measure. Who would be a fun one? Hmm. Just a random person who'd probably be sitting around the shop looking at stuff. Yeah, let's go with the guy, uh, the person right after this person. We'll go with this one here. I like how it looks like whenever it's saying saving to memory card, it looks like it's saying saving to memorv card. Don't know if you know this that or not. So, we got ourselves some custom sprites here, and one thing that I want to show off before we exit this sprite editor is this option right here. This is the test function. It places your character in this here map and allows them to walk around, and uh, it's... I, I, I don't really like the test editor here, because for one thing, the stark contrast with all the lights and the darks makes it really hard to tell how good your character looks. The contrast is just throwing me off, personally. Also, the animation is faster than it would be in your actual game. So, I don't know why it's so fast, but that's what it is. So, we'll go ahead and exit this by pressing... L2. I don't know why you don't just press a button in order to open a menu, but no, you press L2 of all things to get out of that. So, that's our selection of characters that we're going to have in our game. How about we show off some of these other features? Let's start with the title screen. We're not going to have a title screen in the game. Well, sort of. I'm going to use that heart thing that I showed off before, but aside from that... So this thing is a little bit more robust. We got a whole lot more color options, so should we want them? So, there you go there. And also, it's kind of confusing. Interesting that we got save and load options here. I don't know what this option is. What is that option? Use this to make a horizontally gradiated palette. Oh, really? That actually sounds really useful. So, if we do this, put a red here, and then do this. Yeah, that's what it does. That's actually really handy. As you can tell, I don't really use Anime Maker very much, so this is a fun discovery. So, can you just, like, save the color palette if you want? I did not know that was a thing. We'll call it C and No because I was trying for colors, but I typoed again. Memorv card. That is so weird. So 
So I'll test it, test out out in a bit. What are our other options? Uh, we got a grayed out option here. A couple of grayed out options. Those are not used in this particular editor. This is where the regular save and load options are, as well as exit. And we got various tools where we can do the same stuff that we had before. Lines, squares, fills, zooms. What is this one? Grid copy? Use it to copy data in blocks of 16 dots each. That is kind of interesting. But sure, if you wanted to. I can actually imagine why you would want that feature, but I'll go over that whenever it's actually important. That's, um... Shoot, wasn't there something else? I feel like there were some special options somewhere. Yeah, this option. We can, like, have paw prints and stuff. How does this work? Oh, that's right, we got a doodle first. So we'll get that, we got paw prints, and now we can just put paw prints and smear them all over if we want. We got hearts and little dots so that we can draw regular lines, or we can draw some really thick lines if we wanted to. And of course we have everybody's favorite option, the pixel spray. Every retro paint program has got to have one of these, right? Alright, let's go ahead and exit out of this now. We'll go ahead and also check out the monster editor because it's a little bit different. First off, we have this option here now. The reason we have this option is because, of course, monsters come in different sizes. We got small monsters, medium sized monsters, large and extra large. As a reminder, the size of the monster influences what what, um, how many monsters you can have inside a single battle. And the options from here are basically the same otherwise. But something of in particular importance I want to bring up is if we go ahead and load, we once again have the option of choosing whatever stuff we have here from the RPG Maker. Basically, we can modify existing sprites in RPG Maker. But unlike the sprite editor, it doesn't give us every monster. It only gives us some. However, this editor also has a secret monster in it. Extra large number seven. Now let's go ahead and clear this stuff out of the way. Oh boy, isn't that a fellow? Yes, this is once again a monster that is not available in the editor by default. And wow, this is actually kind of cool. I feel like I'm actually going to use this one. Yeah, I'm going to use this guy. So let's go ahead and I think I'll use this color right here. Yeah, that's going to work pretty well. We'll go ahead and save this guy, and we'll call him... We'll call him Magma, or just Magm. I guess those two L's also count towards the character count. And here's a different option here. Because of how much memory this takes up, it takes multiple blocks. We have the option of not compressing, but there's no reason you wouldn't want to not compress. Or something like that. Was that a double negative? I think that was a double negative. The point is, compress that. Totally compress that. You don't need to use any less memory. More memory, something. There's no reason to... Boy, this is hard to explain. I think I already made my point. Just go with the compressed option. Going with the compressed option does not lower the quality of the image. I was just out of curiosity. Let's go back to our color options. And I'm gonna hit the load button. Can I actually load up the colors yeah that's what that option is you can actually save color palettes which um 
certainly has resulted... <laughs> uh, th this monster was clearly not designed for my custom color palette. Uh, no, I don't think I'll be using that. We're just going to leave now. Yeah, that's, that seems like a good idea. By the way, hello to Lit Dragon, who is currently in the chat. I am showing off Anime Maker. RG Maker's built-in sprite editor. Along with the demo feature, I should at least briefly bring this option up. So this option right here has no connection whatsoever to the RPG you're creating. This is an entirely exclusive mode. And I don't really have time to go over this right now. I'll probably create something with this after I'm done making the game as like a little bonus thing. But just as a little bit of a teaser, I'm just going to go ahead and throw in a pig. Just to give you an idea of what this option is for. A little teaser of sorts. And that's the only teaser you get. So let's go ahead and exit Anime Maker and we're going to go ahead and put these custom sprites I created into my game. So let's go ahead and load up the RPG Maker side of RPG Maker. That's kind of redundant. We're gonna go ahead and load back up the game I'm making here, Magnus Opus. Which, by the way, it occurs to me that I kind of misspelled. I actually meant to have this game be called Magnum Opus. And I'm sure the fact that I had it called Magnus Opus has bothered somebody a whole lot. So there you go, it's actually spelled correctly now. Except, I think I'm actually going to change it here. I'm going to call it Magma Opus, because there's a lot of lava in it. From here, let's go ahead and get those custom sprites loaded up. So, for that, we'll go to Utility. No, not Utility. Import. So, let's start by importing a monster. We can import up to 14 custom monsters, and... Considering... Oh, there it is. And considering how much memory these guys take up, that'd be a lot of memory used up. This uses... This one monster uses two blocks of memory, and the memory card only can hold 15 blocks of data. Thankfully, RPG Maker lets you spread your data across multiple memory cards, so that's not really too much of an issue. So there's our super duper magma monster. And we'll also go ahead and get our characters here. For character sprites, you can only include up to nine custom sprites. It's kind of weird that you're not as loud as many custom sprites as you are monsters. Let's see here. Cop is next. Alright, we got our custom sprites and stuff. So if we created a title screen, that option would be right underneath hearts. For our custom monster, that is now taking up monster slot number 100. And our characters are taking up graphics beyond the monkey. Including our uh, fanciful, wonderful Picasso type picture that I drew. Something I forgot to bring up, by the way, is that the background layer of your sprite is automatically made transparent. So that is why there's some transparency 
despite the fact that I didn't actually specify any. So, now that we have our custom surprise, I do believe it is about time to move on and create some more stuff. So, we're going to go ahead and head into our first episode break of today's stream. When we come back, I need to go ahead and finish up that shop. I know what to put in it. In fact, I even know what items to put into it. So that'll be kind of good to have. Oh, darn it! Darn it, darn it, darn it! I forgot about the thing again! Okay, first thing when we come back, even though there's not many people here watching the stream, there's something I've been wanting to point out to show you. I'll do it right when we come back. <laughs> 